Hello, hello, family. Tammy Lynn here with a very encouraging word from the Lord. The Lord says many of you are getting ready to step into a bumper crop season. He says you are getting ready to enter into an Ephesians 3.20 harvest season. He says this is your Amos 9, 11 through 15 season. Glory, hallelujah. Family, this word is for those of you who you received a word from the Lord and you have held on to that word. You have persevered with that word. You have fought the good fight of faith. You have hoped against all hope. Though the enemy tried to wear you out, he could not take you out. Though the enemy tried to steal that word, he tried to steal that seed from you, he couldn't because you held on to it with a bulldog faith. And the Lord says the set time has come for him to demonstrate his faithfulness in your life. And again, it's going to be in an Ephesians 3.20 way. And he says there will be overflow. You will not be able to contain it. There's going to be more than enough. For some of you, he's going to bless you in such a way financially that you're going to be a huge blessing to others. For others, it is because of that testimony that you are going to take and go out into the highways and the byways on your social media, in your church, in your community, and you're going to testify of the Lord's faithfulness. You're going to shout. You're going to sing. Look what the Lord has done. And others are going to be drawn unto the Lord because of what they witness the Lord do in your life. Glory. Hallelujah. He has been speaking this bumper crop season word to me for months now as he has been speaking to me through my grapefruit tree here in my backyard. If you have followed the channel, then you may have heard me back in 2022 talk about this grapefruit tree because the Lord was speaking to me through my grapefruit tree. But 2023 came around and that tree did not produce anything. I knew that that was spiritually representing something. I knew that the Lord had been speaking and making promises to his people, but I knew that many was not going to be seeing the fruition of it when they were wanting to, when they thought that it was going to happen. I've sat and I've watched this tree and I've listened to the Lord speak to me through this tree. So in 2022, it was a bumper crop year. There was more than enough on that tree. Then 2023 came and there was nothing. I actually had wondered at one point if it would ever produce again. And I couldn't understand why it didn't produce in 2023. See, many of you, you just have not been able to understand some things. But the Lord says in his word, I believe it's over in John, where he says, that which I'm doing now, you do not understand, but you will soon hereafter. I believe your soon hereafter has come. And you are about to... Uh, uh, understand it all. It is all about to make sense to you. Glory. Hallelujah. So here we are in 2024 and I began to see the grapefruit tree produce again. And I noticed that it was producing a lot. So the Holy Spirit spoke to me bumper crop. So I have been watching for a few months now my grapefruit tree produce this uh, bumper crop. It's not quite ready just yet. It's almost there. Uh, they, they're, they're bigger in size. The, their color is beginning to change from the green to like the yellow, the, the orange. And so it's almost there. It's almost time. And what I love about this word is we are getting ready to enter into the new Jewish uh, new year on October the 2nd, 5785. This word is very timely. Um, in October, uh, the grapefruits will be ready to eat. They will be ripe. <laughs> the time is right. The Lord says, glory, hallelujah. And he's making everything right. Glory, hallelujah. So some of you, you had the seasons to where everything was right and it was harvest and all was well. But then you went through a famine. You went through 
through a time where you didn't see anything. You didn't hear anything. It just looked like nothing was going to come out of it. But I'm here to tell you in 2024, something is coming out of it. Out of that word that the Lord had given you. Glory, hallelujah. Now is the time for you to see the faithfulness of the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. He has led me to Luke 8. So if you would get the word of God out, deep is calling unto deep. And let's go and take a look at the word of God together. Luke 8, 5 through 15. I'm not going to read um, uh, every all the scriptures. I'm going to skip a few. But hear what the Lord is saying to you, to you, the one that he had given a word to. Verse 5, the sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell beside the road. And it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky soil, and as soon as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. Verse 8, other seed fell into the good soil and grew up and produced a crop a hundred times as great. Who am I talking to? Because I know I'm talking to some uh, good soul right now huh? because he gave you a word. And even though it's like when a uh, farmer sows that seed, he doesn't see anything uh, for a minute. Uh, that seed is in a dark place. It is hidden, hidden. He has to wait for it. Oh my goodness. Those who place their hope in the Lord will not be disappointed. He says you are not going to be disappointed. And he says that the wait is worth it and you are about to see it. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Now let's skip over to verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those beside the road are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that they will not believe, not believe and be saved. That wasn't you because you kept believing. Those on the rocky soil are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no firm root. They believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. You resisted the temptation and you kept believing. The seed which fell among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard and as they go on their way, they are choked with worries and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to maturity. The devil could not talk you out of it. He could not tempt you with anything else. You have remained the course. You have persevered. Oh my goodness, this is about to get real good for you. Verse 15, but the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and held it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. Glory, hallelujah. Family, you held on to that word. Some of you, you have held on to it for years, three years, eight years, 14 years, 19 years, 23 years. You have held on to that word. Hebrews uh, 10, 23. He who promised is faithful. And again, he says he is getting ready to demonstrate his faithfulness in your life in Ephesians 3.20 ways and you won't be able to contain it. Glory, hallelujah. He's also led me over to 2 Kings 8 in regards to the Shunammite woman. This was the woman that the prophet had um, uh, brought her son back to life and then there was a famine and she was told to leave her land because there was going to be a famine for seven years. So she had left her land, but after seven years, she came back. I encourage you to go read it. You can be, uh, find out more about her in 2 Kings chapter 4 and then 2 Kings uh, in chapter 8. I want to end with this scripture right here because I absolutely love it. 2 Kings 8 verse 6. This is this woman who she had to leave her land. There was a famine. But when she came back, mm -mm -mm, God not only restored the land to her, 
but he restored more. He restored to her things that she had no clue. She didn't ask for. She wasn't even thinking about. But God restored it. She had an Ephesians 3.20 moment. An Ephesians 3.20 restoration take place. Verse 6. When the king asked the woman, she related it to him. So the king appointed for her a certain officer saying, Restore all that was hers. And all the produce of the field from the day that she left the land, even until now. There are things that some of you have not been aware of. But the Lord, when he brings this restoration into your life, when he does what only he can do in your life and fulfill that promise in your life, it is going to be more than what you even asked for. It is going to be more than what you even thought it was going to be. He is going to bless you because you waited upon him. He is going to reward you because you kept your faith in him. Glory, hallelujah. Father God, I just thank you for this word. I thank you again for those who have ears to hear this word. I thank you for their bumper crop. I thank you for their testimony. And I just give you all the praise, honor, and glory, Father God. You who are worthy of the praise. You who are worthy to be glorified of. I thank you, Father God, that the set time has come for you to demonstrate your faithfulness in the lives of your people. And also for you to be glorified as you are so worthy of. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, be encouraged by this word. I look forward to hearing your testimonies. Continue to stand firm on the word of God. Stay strong in your faith. And I will talk to you all soon. Shalom.